Okay, first up is the Voynich Manuscript, which is an ancient manuscript from the 1420s with an unread language. It is thought to be a hoax, as many images contain Christianity-like symbols. It's currently in Yale University, so you guys should go and check it out. It's actually pretty cool. Next up is Cryptos, which is a CIA puzzle located just outside the Pentagon. It still has not been cracked, but will be revealed soon by the creator as like a fun little mystery, you know? Okay, now to one of my favorite mysteries, 3301 Cicada. It's basically an online Reddit cryptography puzzle consisting of a mysterious user who called himself 3301, which who claims to be a leader of an international secret organization. This user is looking for highly elite people by posting mysterious puzzles only to be de deciphered by professional ciphers and then posting posters around the world to show that they are elite. Um, there have been three puzzles since 2012 posted on the Reddit. Uh, out of the three, two have been solved and one still remains unsolved with a manifesto book at the end put, at the end point of that puzzle. It's called Liber Primus. It is unknown what this book means and what it could lead to in the future. I personally do not think that this is a global civilization in today's world as it is actually pretty easy to hire someone to stick a poster in a lamppost like on Fiverr or any other of those sketchy websites. But the woe signal is a signal sent over by aliens, although it probably wasn't. It's just a burst of radio waves picked up by a telescope most likely caused by just background radiation. Uh, Rongo Rongo is a, pan, is a band of wood found on Easter Island. It has not been deciphered yet, and its purpose remains unknown. Next is the Tonebee Tiles, which are these creepy signs found in various cities with no knowledge of who made them. Uh, they're basically painted on the actual sidewalk and on the road, and they have been found in the 12 biggest cities in the US, but nobody knows what on earth it could mean. Okay, do you guys know what the Circleville letter mystery is? Yes. Explain, please. That's, that's pretty accurate. Um, yeah, so it was in 1976 when this started. Um, someone started sending sinister and sexually explicit and threatening letters uh, to people in the, to the Circleville is the area, but the postmarks were from nearby uh, Columbus, Ohio. None of them included a return address, so it's mysterious. The blackmailer was never found after the mail stopped in 2003. And yes, he did end up killing a bunch of people by revealing affairs and private business like that. Next up is this text called Linear B, which is an old mysterious uh, text written in Greece long before the Greek occupied the area. The writing is confirmed to be a language and has been deciphered. It has found to include an earlier form in Greek. Uh, linear B language was used for everyday purpose and did signify anything and did not signify anything that important compared to linear A, which was used for religion. It was discovered by Michael Ventrist. So linear B is a syllabic script. Yeah, so it, rep it means that each character uh, represents a syllable in the text. Okay, we have the face toast disc, which is a very old 1700 BC disc found on Crete. It was deciphered in 2008, believed to be a prayer to the Minoan goddess. The Singapore stone, which is a stone discovered in 1880s, was found on the Singapore River. It has not been deciphered yet, but is believed to be an extension of the Maja Pahit civilization. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Um, Roex code is this mysterious codex. Uh, it's unknown where it ever began, probably around Central or Eastern Europe, similar to that of the Voynich manuscript. A lot of the images show pictures from the Bible. It could be an ordinary text written in a script that is no longer known today, or it could just be an encrypted text or possibly a hoax. Um, for the sake of time, we have mysteries of the living uh, and then non-human mysteries. And then it jumps right into the additional cases and guiding questions. So when it comes to these mysteries, the human and non-human mysteries, I'll just add that into the description down below. We're just going through the case studies for the special area because that it's a very important part of the TOC questions because as we all know, a lot of the questions at TOC, both for the bull and the challenge will be on these case studies. So make sure to study those. Um, okay, so the first case study is the Atacama skeleton, which I previously discussed in the second episode 
Um, the next scary encountering was the finding of this dwarf found in the Atacama Desert in Chile. What was found was this small, round-headed dwarf humanoid coined the term Ada. It was first thought to have been an alien, but after extensive DNA analysis, it was concluded that it was just a fetus of a baby that had major disabilities, mutations, and consequently problems such as oxycephaly, which is when your head is much thinner yet taller in size. Next up is the Neanderthals. Uh, these went, these people, I guess we can say, are three, uh, 30K years ago, 3,000 years ago. It is, however, a mystery how they went extinct. It seems like they just disappeared based on records. A few theories suggest that they could have uh, inbred with anyone outside of Africa. However, a small percentage of the human genome says this, and it's basically unknown. Instead, scientists say that they might have killed off that we might have killed off, the Homo sapiens might have killed off the Neanderthals as we were much smarter and more advanced than they were. The motivation is most likely the fight for resources as the Ice Age could have very well motivated to this in the first place. Next up is the San Jose. This is a Spanish filled ship uh, said to have had billions of dollars worth of gold. Unfortunately, it sank in the 17th century, 1708, and the whereabouts were a mystery until the ship was found in 2015. All the gold is now being sent over to Spain, and they legally own the ship, and it's being put in a museum. This next section of the guided questions and additional case studies is an explanation that helped us figure out how the Egyptians made the pyramid. Simply put, um, the bricks would have been put on wet sand, then dragged dragged um, in a sled under the sand to carry all the rocks through the desert. Uh, it's a very possible explanation. There are also various other archaeological cases um, that I've not considered and we'll talk about in this video that might be asked in the World Scholars Cup. So I'll mention these right now. First one up is Tiwanaku and Puma Punka. Uh, there are these huge rocks that weigh over 400 tons. It is weird why they have no chisel marks so um, how they were created remains a big mystery. It was found out that they were notched, then fitted together, interlocking in three dimensions and cleanly cut by some technology that is unknown to scientists today. And basically, very interesting cut rocks. Not sure how it could have been done. That's the biggest mystery with Puma Punka and Tiwanaku. Next up is the Nazca Lines. I already mentioned this in a previous video. Uh, this next mystery is Sask. Hey Huamen, which are these huge stone walls located in Peru. It is unknown how they were built so perfectly. Um, it is thought that thousands of people working together would have made this happen, or maybe it was the aliens we never know. Um, next up is the Stonehenge and the Costa Rica spheres, which I talked about before. Okay, this next mystery is actually pretty interesting. Um, the, it's called the Trillion at Baalbek. It's this temple located in Lebanon where it's there's this really weird, and by I say weird, I mean the world's largest man-made stone rock. It's perfectly carved at a hun at a thousand tons, the same as three Boeing 747 airplanes. And what's actually pretty cool is that it's cut with a perfect it's cut as a perfect uh, rectangular prism, and it's unknown how people were able to do this back in the day. Um, next up, Pyramids of Egypt. We talked about that. Number eight is the Shroud of Turin. This is Christ's bur burial cloth. It's a religious relic. Uh, scientists have tried to remake the cloth using paintings and radiation, but it has mysteriously not worked based on the claims in this document. So what actually happened? Did Jesus create it or is it just another hoax with some weird design that nobody has really been able to figure out? Next up is Star Child. Um, this is another skull found in Chile along with the Atacama skeleton. It appears to have a smaller neck and some problem with the nose as if it's like, as if you got punched when you were born and then you don't really have a nose like Voldemort. It was found that the teeth were of an adult because of its of its of the teeth of the root yet the rest of the reasons why it looks like this is largely unknown star child was theorized and found by lloyd pay uh who's the guy who found it uh, to be a cross between an alien and a human as almost everything in the skull is absolutely unknown next up is the anti kathira mechanism which is the world's oldest oldest analog computer designed to calculate astronomical positions as well as add and subtract it is unknown how the hell this was created as 
but it was found off the coast of Greece. It could date up to 2,000 years or more, but it is very mysterious and unknown to say. Um, the next term here, Kentucky meat shower. This is a case when it rained meat in Kentucky in 1876. Uh, in conclusion, it was thought that it did not rain meat. Instead, it rained something called Nostoc, which is this type of bacteria bacteria. It was later found out that it might have rained meat. Again, this research was done on multiple different websites. The SciShow one, which is the one I trust the most, said that it might have been meat because they preserved the meat samples. And the reason why it might have rained meat was because of a swarm of vomiting vultures who just happened to have vomited meat at the exact same time while flying over people, which <laughs> is kind of disgusting. But again, it might be both it might be both poss possibilities, Nostock or the vultures. It is unknown. Different sources say different things. So next up is this mystery on Kansas. It's a mystery why Americans vote against their economy and social interests. Um, basically, the economy is absolutely terrible in this place yet people don't really care so okay next is this asteroid called uma uma which has entered the solar system last year from another solar system and has revealed many things about the universe that we did not know about before uh it could have been an alien spaceship uh here are a few interesting questions that we have about uma 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 could be an alien spaceship however um there's a few things we discovered from it, which is actually pretty interesting. We now know that there are many more celestial objects than thought in other solar systems because of the frequency, how often these type of things come in, which we thought was much less. So we now know that there are more. The movement of Uma Uma has been ejected with an unusual large velocity kick into the solar system, which itself is very, very strange. The shape of the asteroid was like a thick stick that was rotating very off often similar to that of like a wand in space just rotating around strange let's just put it there and finally the last term of the special area is an explosion known as the tungusta explosion which was a massive explosion that happened in siberia in 1908 uh people thought it was an asteroid uh, yet no evidence of space rock or debris has been found to prove this however scientists say that the asteroid burnt up in the atmosphere where the remnants can be found as rocks scattered around the area and what is even stranger is the fact that no trees grew in this flat area uh, after the event and they still don't now so it's unknown what might have caused it in the first place.